Good evening, folks. It's Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a grand solar minimum update on Wednesday, March 28th, 11.32 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. You're going to be seeing these headlines, the amount of Arctic sea ice is second lowest on record all over the mainstream media. And this is how they obfuscate from the truth. Imagine if I were to use something called sea ice extent to describe the amount of ice in a volume. Extent is not volume. It's a two-dimensional description of the sea ice, and it has nothing to do with how much ice there actually is in the Arctic. So the amount of Arctic sea ice based on a two-dimensional analysis shows it to be the second lowest measured in two dimensions, which means nothing. If we come over to the sea ice thickness from yesterday, according to the Danish Meteorological Institute, thank you guys, they show us the actual thickness and the actual volume of sea ice, which would be a good way to determine how much actual ice is in the Arctic. If we go look at the picture of the sea ice thickness for the 27th of March and go look into the historical record for the past 30 years, we're going to find that the Arctic sea ice is thicker across the Arctic on average more than it has been for 30 years and thickness in some regions are thicker than it has ever been in recorded history especially in these more southern latitudes where i'm pointing right now we can also see that in the last four weeks there has been more arctic sea ice volume increase than has ever been seen at this time period for decades and we have moved well into the multi-decadal average zone. We're exceeding 2016 and 2017 volume levels by over 2,000 2, cubic kilometers. 2,000 cubic kilometers more volume than in past years. And if we actually come over to the Arctic sea ice extent at NSIDC here, where they're determining the two-dimensional second lowest ever, I want to just blink on 2018 for you in orange here. So keep your eye on 2018 and see where the sea ice is now currently right here. 2018. Where is it? Oh, there it is. 2018 is sitting right where the sea ice was in 2016, in the same place the sea ice extent was in 2018, uh, 17. And this, it's sitting at the same place the sea ice extent in two dimensions was in 2007. It's sitting at the same exact place where the sea ice extent was in 2006. And it's sitting at the same exact place the sea ice extent was in 2005. That doesn't sound like the second lowest sea ice extent ever. It sounds like the same as it has been for the last two decades the extent, because the sea ice extent should be the same every year, give or take a few square kilometers. Because it's extent, it has nothing to do with thickness and volume. It's complete nonsense. All the articles warning you of the two-dimensional is the lowest ever is nonsense. I'm showing you right here the facts. We're sitting right in the middle of the average of Years and years of data going back to 2005, and we're sitting right in the middle of every other year as far as sea ice extent, which is two-dimensional and has nothing to do with volume. Nothing to do with volume. Volume is where you would determine how much sea ice there actually is. Total ice, the Arctic sea ice extent changes based on wind patterns and many other variables, and it has nothing to do with melting ice. <laughs> Let's check the albedo. There, the entire Arctic is frozen. Oh my gosh. Look at that. There is ice for almost 6,000 miles in this line. <laughs> All the way to Nova Scotia. You could walk for thousand, from one side of the hemisphere to the other for hundreds of miles in every direction. And most of this ice is 10 to 12 feet thick, if not thicker, all the way across the North Pole, where ships have been getting stuck for decades because idiots don't even look into the ice. They don't think there's any ice up there. 
Uh, Weather Ready Nation, a slow-moving storm storm system will bring the potential for heavy rain and flooding, including hail, lightning, and tornadoes throughout Texas, Arkansas, and Louisiana. It's going to continue for several days. There are flood watches and warnings in dozens of counties throughout dozens of states here. Heavy thunderstorm warnings and watches in Austin, Corpus Christi, Victoria, Laredo, northern Louisiana, eastern Texas. Flood watches and warnings. We have heavy fog advisories for western PA and all of southern Ohio. Dense fog advisories. So heavy rain, flooding, and severe thunderstorms will continue as well as snow. Now let's run through the GFS models and we can see that the upper plains are going to get hit again with more snow moving into April 1st as well as New England. So it looks, it appears as if Erie is going to break the all-time record on April 1st for snowfall in the country. We're going to watch that happen on April 1st. And these snow events are continuing to move across the upper plains through April 5th. More snow in the northeast on the backside of this. And the models are putting more snow in that same region. In fact, a heavy snow event with blizzard conditions on April 7th, moving down through the Central Plains, Indiana, Ohio, and Erie again. And this cold pattern is going to push very far south with a freeze line straight through the middle of the country here on April 8th. Everything above that is below freezing. So interesting pattern developing for the spring, including heavy snow. And let's just go over the total precipitated snow here so we can get a quick look at it. The most accumulated snow, the total snowfall, is going to be in the Craton. So this, for Canada, the models are looking grand solar minimum-like. And here we can see the total snowfall, mostly falling in the Canadian Shield here. All the southern regions that got left out, like Ontario and all those places, are going to get buried heading into the spring here. We have up to 28 or 30 inches of snow happening here in Canada, as well as continuing to fall in western Montana, northwestern Wyoming, up to 36 more inches over the next week. Heavy snows up into Alberta and British Columbia, breaking all-time records for a season. Coming to a spring near you. Grand Solar Minimum Spring. Inside the storm, twisters hail and tear through Texas today. <coughs> it looked like snowfall, to be quite honest. Take a look at that. It's probably 80 degrees out, and that they're driving through ice. <laughs> Welcome to the Grand Solar Minimum. This hail pattern is going to be normal throughout the spring, increasing in abundance, size, and destructive potential. Severe thunderstorms drop hail on South Texas. I'll leave you links to this article coming out of Laredo. Central Mississippi, heavy lightning, flooding. Strong winds have been bearing down on Central Mississippi Wednesday evening. Tornado and severe thunderstorm warnings issued for countries throughout the air, counties throughout the area. Strong thunderstorms will affect the North Hines County, Southern Madison County, until eight dime sized hail was reported, 50 mile per winds expected. This is moving to the east. Great conversation with Leah and Anita Bailey, PhD, tonight. Final edition of Prepping for the Grand Solar Minimum, Cold Times, her book, The Discussion on our radio program over at freedomslips.com is awesome. Let's talk about California's miracle march, more than tripling the Sierra snowpack. Guys, it went from 16% on the last day of February to over 56% snowpack in just the month of March, dumping <laughs> many resorts, including Squall, Alpine, Kirkwood, and Sierra Tahoe, scoring over 17 feet of snow in just the month of March. <laughs> It is amazing what's happening. Thanks, Al Gore. It was never going to snow there, but now we have to stand on the roof to get the 17 feet of snow off in one month. And this is going to be the cover of tonight's video. And it's the truth. Boom. <laughs>
Heads up, Sierras. It's going to continue to snow. There's a few more storms coming your way. Now, avalanches and bad weather have isolated an Arctic community in Norway. Oh, my goodness. These are the signs of the times. The municipality of Bervlag in Norway's Lapland, Finland, has been experiencing problems of food deliveries and transport for six consecutive days. An avalanche in the heavy snowing blocks a country road leading to the village. Now, since Friday, the only road leading to Bivflag, County Road 890, has been largely closed due to danger of avalanche. It was managed to be open for short periods of time on Sunday and Monday, but the Norwegian Public Roads Administration on Tuesday evening, a hunkling ship was allowed to dock in the village, which was empty of food supplies. The avalanche danger remains at four. I don't think anyone can remember that we've been isolated for so long. We've experienced one day, but never a whole week, says Joan Van Nielsen, a storekeeper in Berflag. Now, this is only a sign of the times and things to come. Communities being cut off, shipments not coming in, food supplies stopping. If you don't have supplies for one, two, three days, you're nobody. If you don't have supplies for seven, 10, 20 days, you're getting somewhere. And you should be stockpiling a rotation of rations for every human in your house for up to a year. Because the times are changing and things are going to start to cascade worldwide where you're going to start to notice events like this. We're going to report on them and hopefully that will motivate you to start preparing. Because proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance, especially heading into the Grand Solar Minimum. They didn't properly plan here. British and U.S. submarines are stuck in Arctic ice and they blame the secret Russian weapon called ICE. The polar bears are coming to check out these idiots. And that's for damn sure. They look really healthy. I wonder where the global warming alarmists are here. This is in the middle of the Arctic Sea where there are globe there's polar bears walking around. Somebody's not telling the truth, folks. But it is for damn sure that uh, at the same time, U.S. submarines Hartford and Connecticut were stuck in the Arctic ice as they were training an attack on Russia. Guys, you look like idiots. And that's a grand solar minimum. We're idiots. Heads up. I wonder how many billions in taxes you guys paid for that stupid event. Let's look at the worldwide seismic uptick. We're, we're talking a major activity here in the southwestern ring of fire which is where it all kicks off. So we're waiting for a large VEI 5 to 7 to happen in the Indonesia region, and we're looking at an uptick in moderate earthquakes as KP has been around zero for many hours over the last 24. So we're looking and waiting for a large earthquake to kick off at any moment, and a coronal hole will be joining us, so there's space weather to be added in the picture in the next 24 to 48 hours. Now this is coming out of Seattle Pi, how a 9.0 earthquake would affect Washington's coast. I'll leave you links to this for all the people in the Seattle area that live in these red zones. Get out now. There is seven images here you can run through along the coast, which will determine the maximum destructive power of a tsunami after a 9.0 earthquake. So if you're concerned in these areas, this is a data set which you can access coming out today. Volcano news update. I had it all the way down here uh, at Swanos Hima because we're about to watch that eruption. We have multiple volcanoes, especially in the J Japan region, erupting in recent times. And this is the Swanos Hima eruption today. It's on time lapse, so it's not that good. And the cam is 100 plus miles away. Clearly, we can see massive lava event and explosion type violent eruption. This is a precursor to maybe a huge event. The information is sparse from this region because of the way the government controls the information. But when a large VEI 5 to 7 goes off, the whole world will know because it will get dark and cold. Come check it out at Volcano Watch. Watch China's Tiangong-1 space station in real time as it nears its demise. Enter it's about the size of a bus here, guys. It was launched on September 30th of 2011. 34 feet by 11 feet. The last contact they had was March 2016. 
Its orbit is decaying and it's predicted to re-enter in the next 48 hours. This is coming to drop to a planet near you called Earth. <laughs> and this is just the beginning of a cascading effect of what could be the future for humanity. We're talking the re-entry of hundreds, if not thousands, of satellites in the near future. As the magnetosphere wanes and the perturbations in the magnetic and electrical effects of the Earth increase, um, it really wasn't considered by the engineers that put these things up into orbit what would happen during a grand solar minimum if our magnetic poles flipped. Unfortunately, the side effect could be catastrophic in where one satellite hits another satellite and then a cascading effect caused massive re-entry of dozens of satellites all falling to Earth simply because you could use a cell phone. <laughs> That's what it should look like as it re-enters. I'll leave you links to this uh, article and the simulations so you can come check it out. This is it actually streaking across the side over the last 24 hours. And it's about to re-enter, folks. So hopefully you're not underneath it when it does hit. Let's talk about the three-way conversation we have with my partner, Leah Pan Pantera, a.k.a. Leah Shaper. <laughs> Myself and Anita Bailey, PhD, it was the final week of March Preparedness Month, preparing for the mini ice age, where we talked about her book in great detail, all, all of the chapters. And we talked about the final planning methods, logistics, security, security, and water. Important topics. We had a great conversation. We'll be putting it up this weekend so you can listen to it if you missed it. But guys, if you want to get a copy of her book, the link is below the video here. Click show more. It will reveal all the links, including a way to get her book for $14.95 free shipping. That's over 20% off Amazon. One of our subscribers said they ordered it on the 23rd. It came two days later on the front porch. They were amazed. You will be too by the content of this book. If you don't have a copy, you're wasting time. And that's a boom. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. Times are changing. Here's the April 6th. 2018 GFS predicted deviation from normal. It's exactly as we predicted six months ago that the pattern would be for the grand solar minimum. It's the exact pattern of cooling that is associated with the building of glaciers on the craton here in North America and the Canadian Shield. It's the exact prediction that we made six months ago that will continue into April, causing crop failures up in this grain growing region. And we're gonna watch it unfold because the technology is high. And it's also inedible. So start to learn how to grow your own food starting now. It's spring. And even though we're headed into a solar minimum, unlike any seen in modern times, called the eddy minimum, where cosmic rays will increase and the actual poles will flip somewhere around 25, 26 here. In our lifetime, we may experience a mass extinction and evolutionary leaps unseen ever. Proper prior planning will prevent piss poor performance where we're headed. Gain knowledge, gain power, survive and thrive in the future. Follow us. Subscribe now if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Be safe, everybody.